There was a we 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 had that request. Uh huh. And should we should we tell the story or should we just do it? Should we just lay it on? Because this Go ahead. this song uh, the, well we both we both have recorded versions of this song independently, and that that is a beautiful beautiful thing, and I am thrilled that my friend Alec liked this song so much that he wanted to make it his own and sing it from the perspective of the Divine Masculine because that's what the song is all about. But there was there was a little bit of a there was a little bit of a whoops that happened because of that. Thanks to our dear friend, brilliant, brilliant author named S. M. Sterling. Because he uh, well Steve decided that he was gonna quote this song in his uh, in his novels of the change in that series that begins with a book called Dies the Fire. The problem was that he didn't realize that it was mine and not Alex. <laughs> so I get this email one day and it says, Dear Miss Tucker, which is adorable. <laughs> because no one calls me that. Uh, and I my name is Steve Sterling, I'm a New York Times bestselling author and I have these books and a longer list and I would love permission to quote your songs in a future publication. Thank you, love Steve. And I was like Yes, this is on my bucket list. I've always wanted to be one of those people. <laughs> it's quoted at the top of a chapter with the name of the song and blah. And it's all Charles Lynn's fault because he was the first book that I read. One of his was the first book that I read that did that. And I was like, I want to be one of those songs one day. <laughs> and here's and here's Steve in my email going, Can I? Can I please? And I'm like, Yes. And then he writes back again and he says, well, that's good because I kind of already did. I didn't realize it was your song. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'll fix it in the note, in the, in the acknowledgements page on the paperback, okay? <laughs> and I was huffy about it for a second and then I thought, eh, I'll give permission retroactively. It's cool. I know why that happened. <laughs> That's okay, he got back at, at, at me later by, oh, by no. taking the Mushroom Song off the Tricky Pixie album and uh -oh. thinking it was yours. What? <laughs> you couldn't tell me about that. No, I just found out about it. <laughs> I wrote it back and he's like, oh, well, it's balanced at least. <laughs> well, okay, we're squared. Not that we were to for it. But at any rate, uh, this, this, song, this song came to me when it was written uh, after an experience of liberating someone who needed help at Heartland Pagan Festival ten years ago this spring. I made a friend who was in a situation that turned out to be more like a cult than he was comfortable with. And I, I stepped up to help him and I said, if you decide that you're going to leave by the end of the festival, if you walk off site by yourself, if you can prove to me that you want this bad enough to get yourself out of here physically as well as emotionally and mentally, we will pick you up at the Burger King in town <laughs> and take you home to your mom. And that's exactly what he did and that's exactly what we did. But I was pretty scared because this was the first time that I had had to make a choice where potentially it would come back on me in my community and somebody would, somebody would try, try to, to start something and drag me into it. And so I went to a part of the Gaia campground that is known as Hearn's Hollow. And I took myself into that little grotto and I, and I sank down on my knees in front of that altar for the god of the forest and I said, I need your protection and I need it now. And he showed up. So I rose on, because that's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Just the coming of the oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> 